Welcome to my workshop. You are watching Casual DIY channel. And if you are looking for a desktop small print laser engraver and cutter, I may have a solid option for you. I'm gonna show you the Wayne Lux K8 version with a air purifier that you can purchase separately. It's fully enclosed box and on board it packs 10 watts of power. Now you do have other options of five watts and two and a half watts as well. However, let's have a look at the features of this machine, what it can actually do. So we're gonna run some tests as well. But first of all, check out how it actually arrived to my workshop. As you can see, both of the machines come really nicely packaged. But the most important thing is what's inside and does it really work? Right, so what are you getting? You're getting some samples so you can use it for some early projects and try out what this machine can do. And that's what we're gonna be using as well. You've got the manual and then the machine itself. It will definitely fit on a small workbench or your desk at your house as well. And now let's have a look at the air purifier. We've got the manual here, well packaged. We've got the uh, hose, the machine itself. It's absolutely tiny. So it's not gonna take a lot of space on your workbench or on your desk. Power adapter. And that's it. And we do have a few things inside. As you can see, the packaging is really nice and solid. Even inside the foam as well, makes sure nothing happens to your product during the shipment. As you would expect, you get a cable to connect it to your PC or laptop, power brick, spare lens, a very interesting um, clamp that you can use inside to make sure uh, whatever material you've got inside is square and it's in the right position. So that's quite handy. Some dog tags and some other bits and pieces. So now let's go quickly around the machine. We'll have a look what type of material it's made of, how's the quality of everything and uh, where is what. The whole box, it's all made out of plastic. Although it does seem to be a fairly decent quality. The whole size of the box itself, you've got 272 millimeters, 272 millimeters, and the depth is at 294 millimeters. You've got doors at the front and at the back of the machine. And you do have a transparent glass at the front and at the back that's supposed to filter about 99.7% of the blue light of the laser itself. So it should give you some protection from the laser light. At the front here, you've got the repeat button and on and off switch. Inside, you've got a tray that's just below here and it's removable. So if you're cutting anything out, all the debris will go down. Next, you've got the work base. The top is metal and it does have some cutouts for better airflow as you are cutting uh, materials out. Now, at the top, as you can see, you do have the laser module itself, and it does have a retractable foot to establish the focal point for the laser itself. Now, how does that work? The laser head does not go up and down. The bed is. On this side here, you've got a cogged wheel that when you move it, it actually moves the bed itself. So you need to move the bed high enough so the foot from the laser touches your material that's located on that bed. There we go. And now the focal point for the laser is set up and we can retract the foot. Inside there's also a two megapixel camera, which I'm gonna show you later on how that works. Now, one of the safety features of this machine is when the laser is operating and you decide to open the doors, the laser will stop working. However, as soon as you shoot the door again, it will resume the operation. On the side here, apart from the cogged wheel that raises and lowers the bed itself, you've got the fan port and that goes into your uh, air purifier. And you do have a small lip that's located on the other side to you know, easily grab the uh, laser box and move it around. On the back, as I said, you've got the second door. On here, you've got a micro SD card slot with the card inside. On the corner here, you've got the DC port and USB free connector 
to your laptop or PC. And one thing I actually forgot to mention, at the front, just over here, you've got the USB port for a rotary accessory you can get for this machine. The working area on this machine is 130 millimeters by 130 millimeters, and the travel distance of the base is 100 millimeters. So you can actually engrave something fairly thick. When it comes to the air purifier, you've got a couple of things. Indicator for the filter, the middle button here, that will be the selection of how powerful the airflow is and obviously the on and off switch. The middle button has got another function. So uh, when the indicator is red for the filter, you need to change the filter. So on the sides, you've got these locks. You can take the top off and that's your filter, okay? When you change the filter itself, you then need to reset the filter settings, so press and hold the button for about five seconds, more than five seconds, and it will reset um, the indicator for the filter itself. So let's connect the filter to the machine and let's start testing it out. Before you actually start using the machine, you need to install the driver from the website. In the manual, you will have an address of a website where you can download everything. So you're gonna have options for the software for Windows and Mac as well, plus the drivers as I mentioned. This machine also offers Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can have an application on your phone or for example, on your tablet to operate this laser. It also supports a third party software like Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. However, the camera in this machine can only be operated by the uh, Kutlab X application that was developed for this machine. On the SD card, you will also find the drivers or the files um, that you can import into Lightburn, so it will set up the machine uh, for you straight away. Now, for all the tests I will be doing today, I will be using Lightburn as I'm more familiar with the software and I've just got everything set up like the engraving uh, test and the cutting test as well. So first of all, let's do an engraving test to see the performance of this laser module. For the engraving test, I'm using four millimeter ply. So let's sort up the uh, focal point for this. Super simple. Just raise the bed until it touches that retractable foot. That's about right. Let's put the foot back up. I'm gonna put that more or less somewhere in the middle. Lock it up and let's start engraving. And obviously don't forget to turn on the air purifier. I'm gonna go with maximum speed, but obviously you can change it from low, medium to high. Well, I have to say, I've underestimated the potential of this machine. Look at that, 2000 millimeters per minute, 100% power, 80% power, 60% power, a lot of scorching there, and it's actually very, very deep. Obviously, you can have a look at the sweet spot just in this line, but probably even at the maximum speed of engraving for this machine is 15,000 millimeters per minute, and that is still quite dark with 100% power. So even probably about 80% would be just right for that type of speed. Very good performance when it comes to engraving. Now let's do a cutting test. This is three millimeter plywood. And that's the results. We didn't manage to get anything uh, out at 300 millimeters per minute and 100% power. However, with 200 millimeters per minute, we managed to get down to 80%. So not too bad at all. Let's try four millimeter plywood. Okay, let's have a look at the results. Well, for some strange reason, it actually managed to cut all of them. I wish I've left the 300 in now, but yeah, quite good. 
And just to prove you that this is four millimeters, there you go, with my calipers. Okay, let's do one more cutting test. I've got this 12 millimeter pine board and we'll see how many passes this machine will need to cut that through. And on top of it, we're gonna use the camera feature that this machine has in the software. So I'm just gonna set this up and we'll jump into my laptop. Okay, so this is the software, it's the Cut Lab X, and you do have some basic options here. However, as I said, I do prefer to use uh, light burn with my lasers, but if you don't have light burn, obviously this will do the job for you. Now, to use the camera option, we actually need to change from the connect mode from USB to Wi-Fi. Don't ask me why is that, but that's exactly what you need to do. It's now connected and on the top here we can use activate photographing okay so press that we're gonna wait a few seconds and there you go it took the photo from the inside we can see our piece here so I'm gonna draw a line bob on in the middle and let's go to the settings we're gonna go 100 millimeters per minute 100% power and we'll see how many passes we'll need to get through this Four passes, 12 millimeter pine board, and actually nice and no overburn. And that's because I've elevated that with those plastic blocks for a cleaner cut. Look at that, four passes, 12 millimeter, not bad at all. Right then, now let's test the engraving capabilities at maximum speed, 15,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power, and we're gonna engrave a photo. Well, I have to say, not bad at all. 15,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power. Not bad at all. And look at the details around the glasses, the eyes, shirt. Not bad at all, guys. Very, very good. Let's see if this machine can actually engrave steel. The settings here were 500 millimeters per second and 100% power. And as you can see, very nice engravement, plenty of quality here, nice and sharp, very, very good. Now I do have a business card, it's aluminium, really, really thin and it's coated. So let's have a look what quality we can expect here. The settings here were 1500 millimeters per minute and 80% power and check that out Again fantastic performance with no issues at all and Don't forget to subscribe right. I've got a piece of leather. Let's see how this machine will cope with this The settings here were 1500 millimeters per minute, 40% power. And as you can see, I could even go lower with those settings or actually probably quicker, but uh, all in all, very nice and crisp engraving on a piece of leather. And the final test, it will be a slate coaster. Let's have a look what we can do with that. Okay, let's check it out. It came out actually very, very good. I could probably go even quicker and reduce the power as well on this. Now, as you've seen, the performance of this machine is actually quite good. Engraving, no problems with that. Cutting capacity, not too bad either. And you can tackle different types of materials with this machine as well. Now, I do have the 10 watt module here. They do offer 2.5 watts and 5 watts. Now, I would definitely not recommend you to go for 2.5 watts. In my opinion, that's not enough power. 
the only one I would really recommend is 10 watts. You can always reduce the power, but it cannot go above what it is able to produce. So in my opinion, 10 watts is the way forward. Now I'm also quite surprised how well the air purifier performed. The only time I was able to smell something, it was when it was engraving leather. Other than that, no smoke and no smell. Very good for a tiny unit like this. I wasn't expecting a performance like that. Problem is, I'm not sure how long the filter will last and uh, that could be an issue. But working with it more or less all day today, the filter still at full flow with no issues at all. However, it is an accessory and you need to spend some extra money on it. And to be fair, the whole setup here, how compact it is, is actually perfect to have it on your desk, in your office, or maybe even in your house. Even with this setup and how it performs, I would still use this in a space that you can ventilate it easily, open a window or something like that. Uh, despite the fact you're not smelling anything, there still could be some fumes around. So definitely it's always worth to have it in a well ventilated area. Now let's talk about some downsides of this machine. First of all, the price. The 10 watt module on this machine, uh, the whole package will cost you about $450 and that's not including the air purifier, which will be on top of that. The next thing I'm not a big fan of is the base itself, the metal base here. Um, when you're cutting something out, you will have overburn on the back with it. So I would still suggest elevating your piece of work off it. Yeah, it does have holes, but it's not as good as the honeycomb bases you can actually get out there. So it does work a little bit, but not 100%. All in all, it's a very interesting option for somebody that doesn't have too much space or have a massive workshop to actually use a full-size diode laser machine. And also, if you've got a small business and you're producing some small items or you want to personalize small items, this will be actually quite good. It's fairly quick. The 10 watt module is powerful enough to tackle most of the jobs. And as you can see, it's very compact, easy to move and easy to store as well. If you are interested in this machine and you want to find out a little bit more, I'm gonna drop some links down below with the descriptions and the specs of this tool. However, I'm also gonna be doing an additional video, a project video, so you can have a look in a real life application what it can actually do. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss that video. Also, I've got some really cool playlists just over here. Have a look, maybe you'll find your next video to watch. Hopefully, I'll see you on one of those videos there. Take care.